you do, everything you want, ask what Allah say to do about it. What Allah say not to do about it. That will help you get taqwa. May Allah bless us with taqwa. Today, inshallah, our, our topic is something which we disregard. We don't take it so important. Why? Because we are in the West. That's all. It's something which co we consider is not a big deal. We have the freedom of speech. While a Muslim, your freedom of speech is controlled by rules, by morals, by ethics. There's more things as a Muslim, you shouldn't joke. You shouldn't use your freedom of speech in it, ever, ever. No matter how free you are, you shouldn't use your freedom of speech in these four things as a Muslim. One is about the nature of Allah, about the Zad of Allah. Don't discuss this too much. Accept what he and the Prophet ﷺ told you about Allah. Accept it the way it is. The private life of the Prophet ﷺ, as a Muslim, don't use your freedom of speech on that. Don't discuss this too much. Don't argue about it too much. Accept it as it. Your parent, who they are, their faults, their shortcomings. As a Muslim, you shouldn't discuss it, you shouldn't joke about it, you shouldn't use your freedom of speech in it. While we are in the West, we take the habit of saying whatever we want. As a Muslim, you shouldn't do that. The Quran, you understand it, you don't understand it, but what Allah has said about in the Quran, accept it as it. If you don't understand, ask. But don't use your freedom of speech in it, because it will hurt your religion. These four things, as a Muslim, you have to be careful about them. Give them utmost, utmost respect. Don't discuss too much about them, because you will enter in a zone <coughs> which you will drown, Quran. Now, most of Muslims, they like to discuss the validity of the Quran. Is it true or not true? How this is, this is? Don't do that as a Muslim. It will affect your Islam. It will take you out of Islam, fast as possible. And your parent. And inshallah, our topic will be about parent. Because, alhamdulillah, we came to the West. We walk in, we study in. Alhamdulillah, we, cons we consider ourselves civilized now. We have money. Our parent, we don't give them the utmost respect they do. And we have to know as Muslims, respecting your parent is not what they do to you. It's not what they give you. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do about them. And it's the few subjects in the Quran which Allah explained in detail. Even the prayer, he said pray, perform prayer. How many, when, that he leave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell us. But your parent, he didn't do that. He asked you how even to speak to them, how to treat them, what to say. Now, inshallah, we'll go through it. Ask yourself, that is the way you're treating your parent? Is the way you speak to them? Is the way you take care of them? Ask yourself. Allah said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أهدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناه الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما رب ياني صغيرا صدق الله العظيم In this verse in Surah Al-Isra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed He said he decreed That means it's a final decision As a Muslim you, should, you have to take it and believe in it and apply it in your life as a final decision that we shouldn't worship, no, we shouldn't worship something else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Muslim, every day we repeat that. Every khatib repeat that. You have to study what is shirk as a Muslim. It's the first thing you should do because all your worship depends on that. Everything you do in Islam depends on that. 
if you have slight shirk and you die, everything you do as good in this life is worthless. You have to know that as a Muslim. So make it a priority as a Muslim to study what is shirk. Because Allah said we shouldn't commit that. We shouldn't do that. And the second point, he commanded, he decreed upon a human being to be kind, to be good to his parent. He didn't say, okay, be good and he stopped there. No. He said, if one of them or both of them reach old age while you are alive, he didn't say be good. He, he tells you even how to talk to them, how to respect them. He said, don't treat them off. Off. An expression of anger or contempt of tired of them. Now, most of us today, because we are here, when our parents call us, ask us about money, or we send some money, they spend it in another way. They tell us we need more. You say, oh, those people don't understand about money. They think I'm picking it up, or I'm taking it from the camp, or from the tree. Allah said, don't say oof to them. Oof. Just contempt. Don't do it. Don't scold them. Don't shout at them. It's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how free, the, free you are, Allah said, do not shout at your parents. Ever. Don't talk back or bad word to them, ever. Now ask yourself, when you and your parents are on the phone, you talk them. They tell you something which you don't like. Or they spend your money in another way you don't like. How do you talk to them? Ask the Muslim. Because most of us, we are in the rest, we say, ah, I'm free, I have freedom of speech. I will say, what in my mind? As a Muslim, if you do that, you disobey in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, don't shout at them. He didn't stop there. He said, Speak to them in a respectful tone, with a gentle words. Don't shout, don't talk back, don't insult them. When you talk to them again, you have to talk with respect. Now, ask yourself, because you have PhD or you have a lot of dollars, how do you talk to your parents? Because most of us, because they are from the village or they don't have education or knowledge, we consider them, consider them a third, third world people. We do that, especially my young brothers and sisters who grow up in this country. You have to know it's part of your faith. Obeying the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The orders of Allah, you have to obey them. Don't change your respect for your parents because you came to the West. Because you're free. Because you can say whatever you want. Or because you're the one who's spending money on them. Allah said, don't do that. And he didn't stop there. He said, Submit yourself before them in humiliation. Ever, as a Muslim, don't stand in front of your parents as you are a something big. Don't do that. Or you come, you come because you came from Europe or America. You show them that, now you've grown up. When they tell you something, you say, no, I'm an adult, adult now. Don't tell me that. Allah said, don't do that. To the point he said, when you are standing before your parent, submit yourself in humiliation. With compassion. With compassion. But to come and say, okay, now, alhamdulillah, I'm a doctor, or I'm a rich man, or I'm a teacher, or I have a lot of money, or I'm the one who feeding you people, what I say goes, what you say doesn't go. As a Muslim, that will destroy your Islam. That will affect your Iman. You disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, when you speak to them, with respect and gentle, no matter how mad you are, when you submit yourself in front of them, before them, with humiliation, out of compassion. He didn't stop there. He said, 
That as a Muslim, every single day you have to pray for your parents. Every single time you talk to them, you have to pray for them. Every single time they communicate to you, you have to pray for them. Ask Allah to be merciful, to be kind to them. As the way they nurture you in your childhood. Allah tells us that. Well, most of us, we take it as a joke right now. Especially the young guys. Especially the young guys. You have to know, respecting your parent, Allah didn't put it at last place. He put it at second place. Second place. He said, don't commit shirk, worship him alone, and be thankful and grateful to your parent. And he teach you how to do it. Most of the things in Islam, Allah will say, do it. But the explanation will come from the Prophet Except this matter. He explained it, how to talk to them, how to com comply with them, how to react to them. He said, don't say bad word to them, ever. Ever. Because he said, he remind us. Why? He said, "Wa wasayn al-insana bi walidayhi hadatuhu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn wa bisaluhu fi amain anishkur li wa li walidayka ilayya al-masir He said he commanded a human being not only Muslim, every human being he commanded you to be good to your parents and he reminded you your mother carried you she carried you in her womb, in her belly Despite weakness upon weakness, despite hardship upon hardship. You imagine, even you order your cell phone, if you put it in your back or your pocket 24 hours, you will take it and flip it out. You cannot even sit. Remind someone taking you nine months, eight months in her womb with you. After that, when you grow up, you talk back to her. You consider her weak or uneducated because you make some dollars. Allah remind you. In two years, from giving birth to weaning you, two years, 24 hours, you are stick with her. And they are the only people in the Quran, Allah said, thank me and thank them. He didn't say thank me and thank the prophets. No. When he said, anishkur li wali wali Be thankful to me, Allah. Be grateful to Allah. And say, be grateful to your parents. Automatically. He's right and your parents are right. And we have to know in Islam, obeying your parent is something which Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu ask us to do. And it's in the highest position in Islam, not lowest, the highest. In a point, it's more beloved to Allah than you fasting and making zakat and going to Hajj. Because Adib ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, Sa'altu Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyul amali ahabbu ila Allah. Ayyul amal? أحب إلى الله قال الصلاة على وقتها قلت ثم أي قال بر الوالدين قلت ثم أي قال الجهاد في سبيل الله أو كما قال الرسول الحديث صلى الله عليه وسلم ابن مسعود say one day I asked the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what is the most the most beloved actions to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that being as a Muslim what is the most gracious, the most rewarded, the most beloved action you will do? Allah will rule what it is. The Prophet ﷺ said it's praying on time. That means your five prayers, you perform it on time. That is the most beloved actions as a Muslim you will do. Allah is love it most from you. The second one, he didn't say fasting. Even jihad, he didn't say jihad. He said, Being thankful, obedient, grateful to your parents. That is the second thing. Second action which Allah loves the most from us. The third one, he said, Jihad. Striving for the way of Allah. That means taking care of your parents, obeying them, respecting them, nurturing them. It's more beloved to Allah than you giving up your life. So as a Muslim, if Allah put it in second place, why we today, 
we don't consider it something important. Especially the way we talk to our parents. Especially the young ones. You have to know, no matter how intellect you are, no matter how faithful you are, no matter how iman you have, your parents, Allah choose them to only two among the 10 billion human beings for you to be your parent. And they are your door to the heaven. Doesn't matter they're good or bad. Doesn't matter they are Muslim or non-Muslim. Doesn't matter. Your parent, to be grateful to them, to take care of them in this world, doesn't matter who they are in Islam. Even if they are Muslim, people who don't pay, don't, not Muslims, they don't like even Islam. But Allah says, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا in this world, to, for them, you will treat them with kindness, with goodness. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. The most beloved action you will do, Allah loves the most, you have to know, it's not just giving money. It's not just giving them money. It's taking care of them and treating them good and well. And that includes the way you talk to them. The way you talk to them. Because Allah tells us how to even to talk to them. He didn't say be good. Only. He said the way you talk to them. The way you present yourself in front of, before them. The way you take care of them. The way you pray for them. We have to know that. As a Muslim. Our parent is not a joking laughing matter. Especially the young ones. If anyone start joking for his, with his parent. Move away from him. Any human being, if he starts insulting your parent or his parent, move away from him. Totally. As a Muslim, you have to do that. It's a duty. Otherwise, you will be part of it. And anyway, you disrespect, disrespect your parent, you have to know the hellfire door is open for you. Totally. Because a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, جَاءَ رَجْمِ الْنَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ مَنَّ حَقُ النَّاسِ بِحُسْنِ صَحَابَةِ من حق الناس بحسن صحابتي قال أمك قال ثم من قال أمك قال ثم من قال أمك قال ثم من قال أبوك A man come to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said Oh Prophet in the humanity in the world who I should treat better who deserve my best treatment in this planet among the whole people in the planet who deserve the most. most. He say, your mom, your mom. The person say, who next? The prophet say, your mother. He say again, who next? The prophet say, your mother. Three times, then he say, your father. That mean, your mother, you should treat her better than your wife, better than your kids. Better than your best friend. Better than your bosses. Your mother has the priority. Now, some of us Muslims, we take the habit of the rest. Our garages are bigger than our mother's homes. Our insurance we pay for our three, four cars is more what we send for them. Just $1,000, 2000 we send for them this month. If next month they ask, what they think what? I'm collecting money from the bank while your cable bills and your insurance is more higher than what they ask you for. As a Muslim, you have to be careful of that, brothers. Having the luxury while your parents sleeping in one bedroom or they have to go to work while you dis wasting money, Allah will ask you about it. Because the Prophet told the companion and us, the best treatment you give to a human being in this world who deserves the best is not your wife, it's not your kid, it's your mother. Your mother first. You take care of her more than what you take care of your kids. What more than what you take care of yourself. Three times he say your mother, then your father. Now ask yourself, is the way you treat your mother? Who live? Luxurious, your wife or your mother? Who eat more better food, your kids or your mother? Ask yourself as a Muslim, answer it. 
and know what the Prophet Sallallahu told us and what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said. To the point even like one man, Jarajul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing in the jihad. 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 Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing in the the Prophet asked him, do you have parents? He said, yes. Are they alive? He said, yes. The Prophet said, return to them and take care of them. That is your jihad. That is the place of a parent Allah gave we Muslims. We shouldn't be like a non-Muslim brothers. When your parents say, help them something, you shout. When they ask you, take me somewhere, you say, hurry up, hurry up, I'm telling you, make me late. As a Muslim, you should not do that. No matter how they ask you money, brothers, whatever you give them is little toward them. Toward them. It's little. One day, a man came to the Prophet com uh, complain about his father using his money. The Prophet said, Anta Ma look at the Adik. And short answers. He didn't say what he do, what he didn't do. He just complained, my father spending my money doing good. The Prophet said, you and your money and your wealth is for your father. And, and of course, now we, what we do? How do we talk to our parents? Because we have freedom of speech, be careful of it. Otherwise, hellfire is open for you. Okay. Alhamdulillah, in the beginning, Mati Hikatimu Salihat. الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا فيا اخوه الاسلام والايمان اكثروا من الصلاه والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى فان الله وملائكته يصلون عليه وقد امرنا بالصلاه عليه حيث يقول المولى سبحانه وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Dear brothers and sisters, we have to know in Islam the place and the status of a parent is at the highest level in Islam. The highest level. Not the lowest level. Not optional. It's obligatory. Mandatory to take care of them. Especially when they are old. Especially when they are tired. Especially when they are needy. Especially when they are poor. It's not befitting of a Muslim who have Iman in his heart to have the biggest house while his parents are sleeping in a tiny home. It's not befitting of a Muslim to drive an expensive car while your parents are working hard to feed themselves. It's not befitting. It's not befitting of Muslim to take your family and your wife, put them in a nice home, and take your parents and put them in a nursing home. That is not Islamic. It's against Islamic teaching against Islamic teaching to have a nice home because your wife or your kids don't want your mom, mom there or your dad you take him out of the house it's not befitting of a Muslim they should be in a better place than you in your life if you want the akhir and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day told the companions min akbar al kabairi an yashtumar rajul walidayhi qalu hal yashtumar rajul walidayhi qala naam يَسُبُّ أَبَا الرَّجُلْ فَيَسُبُّ أَبَا وَيَسُبُّ أُمَّ الرَّجُلْ فَيَسُبُّ أُمَّ أَكْمَا قَالَ الرَّسُولُ الْحَبِيبُ صلى الله عليه وسلم He said among the greatest, the gravest sins is a person to insult his parent. The companions didn't understand it. They said how someone with a common sense can insult his parent? How that can happen? Can someone do that prophet? He said yes. They say, how? He say, if you insult someone's parent, you insult somebody's father, then he insult your father. You are the one who insulted your father. Or you insult someone's mother, then he insulted your mother, you are the one who insulted your mother. See the way, the equation. That means in any way, as a Muslim, you shouldn't cause anything harm happen to them. You shouldn't insult someone's father for not him in return to insult your father. 
that will be you are the one who instigated and insulted your own mother. To that point, as a Muslim, especially the young ones, in Islam we don't have mama jokes. Even on the TV, don't watch it. Anyone who is joking with his parent, don't listen to him, don't be near him, don't accept it from him. Move away. Otherwise, you are the one who disrespected your parent. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us it's among the gravest sins. Among them. He says, Salazatun la yuqbal minhum fardan wa la naflam khabu wa khasim al-aqul walidayhi wal mannan wal mukadzim bil qadr Three people Allah will accept for them anything. Prayer, good deed, obligatory or voluntary. He won't accept it from them. One of them is the person who is ungrateful, unkind, undutiful to his parents. And we said in Islam doesn't matter their religion, doesn't matter their behavior, doesn't matter. They're good to you, they're bad to you, they are your parents. Allah asks you to respect them. Allah asks you to be good to them. Allah asks you to be kind to them. And if you don't do it, in the day of judgment, what you pray, what you do good, he won't accept it for you. Because you didn't follow his order. You didn't respect the people he tell you to respect. And we said in the Quran, he never said, thank me and thank someone else, except your parent. He said, thank me, and ishkurli, wali wali daik. And we know we have to thank the Prophet, because he is the one who taught us Islam. Who Allah said, obey him. Or your parent, he said, thank them. Then obey him, then be good to them, and then be kind to them. And they are the door to your heaven and to your hell. It's up to you, which one you choose. You treat them good, you go to Jahannam, or to Jahannam, you go to paradise. You treat them bad, you go to hellfire. And it's one of the two things which Allah will pay you in this life before you go to the next life. If you disrespect your parent, Allah will make the people around you, especially your kids, will disrespect you, no matter what you do. It's up to you. al Transgression. Torturing the creation of Allah and being undutiful, unkind to your parent, Allah will give you the result in this life. He will show you the result here before you go meet him there. So as a Muslim, we have to be careful of our parents, especially the freedom of speech which we have, which we don't care. We will say whatever we want, the way we want it, in face of whom we're talking to. Because when you have that habit, because here we have the habit, a young one can speak to an old person, you don't care. He will say the way he want directly. As a Muslim, you don't do that with your parents, ever. No matter how mad you are, no matter how tired you are, you have to give them their due respect. Because we have to know kingship is important in Islam. That maintaining your relation with your relative, your parents, father, brothers and sisters, it's important in Islam. The Prophet said, لا يدخل الجنة قاتع رحم Anyone who, see, who cut the relationship between he, him and his relatives, the Prophet said he won't go to Jannah. And he knows better than us. To the, pro, to the point Allah said, الرحم معلقة بالعرش تقول من وصلني وصله الله من قطعني قطعه الله The bond of kinship that means your relationship with your relative is in the throne of Allah, down there. Every day it makes a prayers. Allah, anyone who join me and take care of that relation, take care of him. Anyone who cut that relation, who sever it, sever your relation with him. And Allah will answer it. May Allah give us the right understanding of this deen. May Allah give us the complete iman to know what is right and what is wrong. اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والإسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولوالديهم ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات 
انك على كل شيء قدير وبالاجابه الجدير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين. Brothers fill the gaps please. Allahu reward you for it.